welcome to mechanical comprehension lesson part two for your army aviation officer candidate test prep shift in this video we'll cover some of the uh, mechanical comprehension that you need for your ship test so before you start make sure that you have a pen and a notebook so you could write some important information for your test prep and as always pause the video and practice by yourself make sure that you learn every single slide in the video and then download this application called ship tutoring app from your app store or google play that has a mechanical comprehension section so in this section make sure that you do all the homework and then take practice test and get 80 percent or higher okay so that will cover very much everything you need for your ship test so let's get started in this lesson we learn simple machines lever pulley inclined planes gears different types of camps pressure some thermodynamics density electricity and electronics and magnet so the first thing we learn simple machines so you know simple machines are machine make your life simple or easier so you know there are basically six different types of simple machines those are lever pulley wheel and axle inclined plane wedge and screw so we basically learn the mechanical advantage of each of those simple machines so if you learn those we will cover a lot of things in the um in the test so the definition of mechanical advantage is force input or over force output same as input distance over output distance so make sure that you write that down on your notebook so here is the uh, lever theory behind the lever is that the longer the lever provide you more torque so you could see here uh, different components of a lever those are fulcrum fulcrum you could see here this is the fulcrum where um, uh, at point which the lever rotates right so you could like go up and down uh, around this fulcrum so, and always measure this torque um, on on the fulcrum okay let's keep that in mind so the next thing is effort effort is a point on the lever where forces is applied so you could apply these forces in here and the resistance is the output force the part of the lever that act in a response to the effort so the class of lever is determined by the location of the effort force and the load relative to the fulcrum so let's make sure that you you know this terminology and write down on your notebook you could see a mechanical advantage of a lever is length of the effort arm over length of the load or resisting arm you could see here um wh what is called an effort arm and what is called uh, resisting arm so you know there are different types of lever right so um the lever are uh, determined by um the fulcrum location and also the load right so the first class lever fulcrum in the middle we could see here this, this figure right second class lever fulcrum at the end fulcrum at the end um and load is in between and you see this load is in between the third class lever fulcrum is one end um effort is in between so you could see like all these examples make sure that you write down uh, those examples you really really need this they will ask you in the test so and these are the picture of this um different first class second class and third class lever okay make sure that you learn this this is very very important concept for uh, for your test so here is a um, example problem you could see here so you could see uh, this is a fulcrum in here the a 50 pound load is applying at point b how much load you need to apply in order to um, make into a equilibrium position or you want to lift it right so you could see here the the distance um uh, here is from c to b is seven and b to f is three right so you need to always uh, make sure that you understand that because it will sometimes is confusing but if you practice you could get that so you could get f times 10 feet so 7 plus 3 is 10 feet um equal to 50 times 7 so you solve that and you get 35 so that means if you have a 50 pound load and if you use the fulcrum 
you actually need a 35 pound to lift it so that gives you a mechanical advantage okay so that is the whole purpose of using this lever so next thing we'll learn is called pulley a pulley is a simple machine in which ropes is carried by the rotation of a wheel so you could see uh, this is a, um, a pulley system right the mechanical advantage of a pulley the number of ropes in movable pulley okay so very important concept in here too so say like you have a object in here and you're um they try to pull right the more you use the pulley then you need to apply less load in order to lift that object that's why you could see like a big big concrete blocks they are like a lifting with a very tiny machine how that is possible that is because of this pulley system so here is the mechanical advantage of uh, different types of pulley if you say the mechanical advantage of one if you have like a hundred pound load in here so if you want to use like a single pulley the mechanical advantage on that means you need to apply um hundred pound or hundred newton in order to lift it if you use two pulleys then you need a 50 pound load to apply in order to lift it if you use three pulleys divided by three thirty three and one third if you use four pulleys you need only 25 pound uh 25 newton um to lift that 100 newton of objects so you could see like how pulley system help to um to make your life easier so the next thing we we'll learn is called a belt pulley the same as pulley system so the belt pulley is a two pulley connected uh by drive a belt so you could see a two pulleys here is a pulley another pulley is connected with a belt right if the pulley are connected without a twist so that means this is, is without a twist um the belt move in the same direction so it will be have like a same direction right but if you use um with a twist then they will rotate uh, opposite direction so let's keep that in mind the next thing we'll learn the mechanical advantage of a inclined plane so that you could see the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane is length of the ramp over height of the ramp i highly recommend you to write down each single thing you don't need to buy any book or anything if you just follow this lesson and use the application to practice because we we use this uh, students are using this um application to practice and pass the test with good scores so the next thing we we'll learn a gear right so the mechanical advantage of gear is the number of teeth in the uh, driven or load gear and the number of teeth in the effort or uh, driver gear so you could see here um this also the number of tooth and the number of um the rotation there is a relation with that so r1 d1 equal to r2 d2 or r times d equal to uh, capital R capital D so um, you could um, use this equation to find out number of teeth and number of revolution of a bigger or a smaller gear system so you could see here the next thing we learn is cam so you see the cam give you um, repeated motion so you could see here this is giving you uh, repeated motion so a cam and follower system allows the mechanical system to uh, have a time specific and repeated motion so you could see a different part of this uh, cam system is called a spring this is guide this is follower and this is um, um wedge right so if you have a single lobe that means it gives you one repeated motion if you have a two then it will give you two repeated motion so make sure that you learn this the next thing we we'll learn is called pressure it's a very important concept the bernoulli's equation so the definition of pressure equal to force per unit area i think you learned this and from the previous um pre previous lesson so if you see here a pipe right the um, the air is flowing to a pipe right so let's learn this on very carefully so when the um air is flowing through the pipe here the diameter of the pipe is, is smaller so that means at that point it has a high velocity of the air right and here when you pass um it, it will the it has low uh, velocity so keep that in mind high velocity low pressure low velocity high pressure you need this concept everywhere um in 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 the aviation field if you fly with the airplane or helicopter it's a very very important concept 
to learn okay high pressure uh, low velocity low pressure high velocity so you could see here uh, this is an example flying an airplane so you could see this is a airplane or airfoil um the wings of a airplane so when you see a wings of a airplane so what part of the wing has more velocity so on the top of this um the wing it has like more air flows in that direction that means high velocity that means it has a low pressure and this and the bottom side is as like low velocity that means high pressure so high pressure means that is giving you the lift of this uh, airplane that's we fly if you doesn't if you don't have any lift from the wing airplane cannot fly at all so that is the whole purpose of putting a line and then like nice um, wing of air, uh, airplane and um, the helicopters. The next thing we we'll learn some thermodynamics. Okay, so heat transfer. So the main um, way heat transfer are called conduction, convection, and radiation. So make sure that you learn these three things. The conduction means the transfer of heat by physical contact right so um if you have a like um uh, i have an example the next uh, next slide you could see here um the conduction heat transfer by physical contact of um, solid medium right so uh, you could see uh, those are the example good conductors copper silver iron steels bad conductor also called uh, insulator air wood paper and clothing right so you could see here the convection, the convection heat transfer by movement of fluid, right? So you could see uh, this is called um, convection, this is called conduction, and this is called radiation, right? So we'll come to the radiation next. So the radiation is the electromagnetic wave that causes the ionize and transfer heat when put contact with an object. So you, you could see uh, we get the um, the uh, the heat and light from sun, right? So that is because of the radiation process. The campfire emits the radiation, light bulb, microbe, this all are those are the um, example of radiation. The next thing we learn is called a bimetallic strip. So this is the question sometimes come in the test. I saw uh, many students actually um, told us that they, they want to learn more about that. That's why I add those slides. So make sure that you learn this thing. So two different types of um, materials like sandwich is other. So it's called um, bimetallic strips, right? Metal with less is heat expansion on the top, metal with more heat expansion on the bottom. And if you like uh, make it cold, so it will look like that is one part will go up and um, like bend like this direction. So let's make sure that you learn this thing. The next thing we we'll learn is called a density. So, you know, the density is mass over volume. So, if you see like um, two boxes fill out with different materials uh, and has like different mass or weight because of the density. Key takeaway, higher altitude, less density in the air and um, less atmospheric pressure. In this section, we'll learn electricity. The first thing in the electricity we need to learn is called charge. The charge is the characteristics of elementary particles okay in atoms protons have positive charge electron has negative charge and neutron has no charges right so that is a neutral so the unit of charge is called coulomb so make sure that you learn this thing the next thing we learn is called current right so in electricity there are mainly three things we definitely need to learn current resistance and voltage so first we we'll learn the current current is the flow of electron so here is the definition of um the charge or current is uh, q over t right the unit of current is ampere so there are mainly two types of current direct current and indirect current so um direct current is called uh, dc power and alternative current is called ac power okay the next thing we we'll learn is called voltage voltage is the potential energy for electric work done right so um so in electricity the electrical power equal to current times voltage make sure that you learned it and write down your notebook 
So the next thing we'll learn is called a resistance. This resistance is same as the friction. Okay, so the, this is the uh, different uh, uh, name in, in electricity is called resistance. So a pro property of a material which resist the flow of electron, right? So when, when you send the electricity from one place to another place, um, it has some voltage drop. That means um, it has some loss. So the, the, the main loss because of this um, the resistance, right? So we'll learn a little bit more about the resistance. The unit of resistance is called ohm. So you could say this is a typical resistor. And, um, and this is the, sample, uh, the symbol of um, a resistor like that. So that there is a relationship between um, current, voltage and resistance um, is called B equal to IR. So that is also called Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is state that the voltage across a conductor is a directly proportional to the current flowing through it. Okay. So make sure that you, you learn this important formula um for your test so the next thing we'll learn is called circuit right so we'll learn circuit there are mainly two types of circuit series circuit and parallel circuit okay so we'll learn this so um so you could see here the uh, series circuit series means in a line so here is a right so this is called a series circuit okay so make sure that you learn they will ask the question what type of circuit it is series circuit or uh, resist, I mean the parallel circuit. The total resistance in a series circuit RT equal to R1 plus R2. So if this one is R1, this one is R2. So the total resistance you need to add them up. The next thing is parallel circuit. Parallel circuit means the circuit with a side by side like a rail line, right? So you could see here. So um, so this is this is one this is another one so this is the main that the current comes through this this i comes through this and it's split into two parts right so this is um, called uh, parallel circuit so make sure that you you know that which one is series circuit and which one is parallel circuit the total resistance of a parallel circuit is that the formula so so say like you have um two resistor here is uh, five and 5 so if you connect it with the parallel so that gives you 1 by rt equal to 1 fifth plus 1 fifth and if you simplify that gives you rt equal to 2.5 that means when you connected the um the two resistor in a parallel the resistance actually decreased but if you add with series it will increase okay let's keep that in mind okay so what is fuse the fuse is a soft wire which uh, melts break a circuit of an electrical current exceeding a certain level. So you could see like once in a while like, you know, oh, my, my fuse run out, right? Or like the circuit breaker uh, popped up, right? So that, that's exactly what happens in here. Make sure that you learn this. AC and DC current. So AC means alternating current that like um, sends the direction every second. Um, the DC current is the the current is go like a single direction. There's a battery. This is a um, AC current. And normally the current we use at home is called alternative current. So the next thing we we'll learn is called a magnet. So make sure that you know this thing. So the magnet, um, the property of magnets attract um, the magnets north pole with the north pole um, repels each other, but the opposite pole attract each other so make sure that this this thing um what exactly happen when two magnet come together so that's like the very basic concept you need to know okay so um make sure that you watch the video multiple times take note and download this application from the link below and practice it will help you a lot you don't need to buy any book or anything uh, from our experience of uh, helping hundreds of people and good luck